Oh yes, live action Anakin Skywalker and Ahsoka Tano on screen together for the first time. This was the moment that everyone was talking about the most, obviously. And yes, it was the moment that made me jump out of my chair. But that's not what makes this episode great. No, it's the directing, the character arcs, the vastly improved pacing from previous episodes, and yes, the lightsaber fights. Anakin was just the icing on the cake. I was already like, wow, this is a great episode, long before Anakin showed up. Well, we'll have to see if it's really him. It might be the son from Clone Wars playing with Ahsoka, but I'll explain this at the end of the video. So let's analyze it all. At the start of the episode, we get an important Sabine-Ahsoka conversation, which already foreshadows Sabine's decision to not destroy the map. When Ahsoka first suggests that they might have to destroy the map, Sabine says, I won't come to that. This shows how Sabine doesn't even want to consider this to be a possibility. Then, when Ahsoka says that he might have already come to this point, Sabine responds with, He'd be stranded out there. Maybe this time for good. Here we can see that Sabine's immediate reaction is always to not even consider this a possibility or to argue against it. This is consistent with what I had previously talked about in my analysis of the first three episodes of the show in regard to Sabine's motivations, which is also confirmed at the end of this episode. She feels like she failed Ezra. He said that he was counting on her to see this through, and yet she hasn't come through for him. At this point in her life, her biggest drive is not to master the Force or rise in the ranks within the New Republic or restore Mandalore. Some of these things may be important to her, but her biggest goal is to find Ezra, above all else. Because this was the responsibility that was given to her. Then we have Balin sending Merrick and Shin to delay Ahsoka and Sabine because he knows that the guards won't be able to delay them for long. And well, they really didn't. In the next scene, Sabine is getting her weapons ready, but she misplaces a piece of it and is seen frantically looking for it. Ahsoka notices this and easily finds the missing piece. Here we can see how Sabine clearly is not on the best state of mind because of the conversation she had with Ahsoka about having to possibly destroy the map and leave as stranded. When Ahsoka says that they have to do what is right, regardless of their personal feelings, Sabine does not respond with, you're right, no. Instead, she says, You really believe that? So yep, looking back, the hints for her future decision were all there, but I missed it when I was first watching it. Then we have a cool droid fight, which really made me hope that Hyu Yang would get a lightsaber of his own. But when Ahsoka and Sabine go out to fight the guards, I love how the first thing Sabine does is to protect Hyu Yang by shooting the droid that was attacking him. I like how they wrote her to look out for him first. Then we have some great teamwork between Ahsoka and Sabine here to beat the guards. My favorite part is when one of the guards starts heavily shooting at Sabine, so Ahsoka uses the force to move the guard in front of her and place him in front of the other guard. Although the last move is very cool as well with Sabine using her Mando tech to pull the guard forward so Ahsoka can finish him off. I think this whole scene really supports what Hyu Yang says right after that Ahsoka and Sabine should stay together because they always did better that way. Stay together. You always did better that way. This is obviously ignored by them later on when they choose to split up, which leads to drastic consequences. So Hyu Yang's warning serves as great foreshadowing here to what would happen if they weren't together. Folks, listen to Hyu Yang from now on, please. Next, we see Hera disobey orders to go help her friends. She says that she's not just gonna sit around and do nothing. I do think this is a very Hera thing to do. Although it does seem irresponsible to take Jason with her on this specific mission, I guess she did not know how badly things would turn out. Oh, and it's nice seeing Carson again. Then we have Morgan opening the map once again, and Ahsoka and Sabine running into Merrick and Shin. We see Sabine finally utilizing all of her skills together in fighting Shin, which is essential for her to do, particularly since she can barely use the Force at this point. She cannot rely solely on her lightsaber skills, she needs to put her Mandalorian skills to use as well, just like Kanan said to her in Rebels. You must use all your skills together. We also see Ahsoka fighting Merrick, where she slashes his abdomen open, only to be revealed that he was made by Night Sister Magic. This reminded me of Savage Opress from the Clone Wars, where even though he was not made by Night Sister Magic, his abilities were heavily enhanced by it. But then we have Ahsoka and Sabine split up, and this is where things start going downhill. Ahsoka comes across Balin, where he mentions that Anakin spoke highly of Ahsoka. I love this because it points to how proud Anakin was of her. Balin mentions Ahsoka abandoning Anakin, which seems to piss Ahsoka off a little bit. I'm not here to discuss my past. But we don't really get that much insight into Balin's motivations. He says he aims for something greater. But what does he deem to be great? He says it's necessary to destroy in order to create. But what does he want to create? 
I'm just really intrigued to know what his goals actually are. The Ahsoka Balin lightsaber fight was great. I love that it shows them using their environment in their favor, such as Balin throwing the rock at Ahsoka. Also, they incorporated more acrobatics into Ahsoka's fighting, which is very accurate to how Ahsoka fights in the Clone Wars. We also have the Shin Sabine fight still going on, where we see Sabine doing a very, very small force push. But hey, at least it's something, right? But Sabine is able to disarm her using her Mandalorian tech. Ahsoka finally is able to reach the map, but it is embedded with Night Sister magic, which burns her hand. This heavily weakens her, so at this point on, she starts losing the fight. When Shin gets there, Ahsoka assumes she killed Sabine, so she loses her balance and acts on anger, using the force to throw Shin into a rock. This is obviously not really how Jedi are supposed to act, but as Ahsoka says, I am no Jedi. This seems to really make Balin mad though, so he becomes more aggressive. Sabine gets there as well and gets the map. Ahsoka is relieved to see her alive and tells her to destroy the map, but Sabine doesn't. And by Ahsoka's reaction, I think this is the moment when she realizes that Sabine will not go through with this. So Balin strikes her and causes her to fall down the cliff, supposedly to her death. Sabine is distraught. She threatens to destroy the map, but Balin uses the force to feel her intentions, at which point he realizes that she will not destroy it. So he puts his lightsaber away and asks Sabine to join him in the journey to Peridia, promising that no harm will come to her. He mentions Ahsoka being responsible for Sabine's family dying on Mandalore because Ahsoka didn't trust her. I hope that they will show a flashback into what happened here and show exactly how Ahsoka and Sabine split up. They certainly must do this at some point. So yeah, Sabine gives the map to Balin. I heard people say that she didn't have too many good options at this point, which is true. In Sabine's mind, Ahsoka may be dead. It's just her versus this powerful force user and his apprentice, which will likely wake up soon. Without Ahsoka here, she has two options. Shoot the map and be killed by Balin, or give him the map and live. The right choice is to shoot the map and give your life in order to stop Throne's return and prevent another war, which will save millions of lives. But when you weigh Sabine's love for Ezra into the equation and her desperation and life goal to bring him back, it shifts the scale on the other direction. So I don't think Sabine is too worried about her own life here. I do think she'd easily lay her life down to prevent a war. It is Ezra that prevents her from doing that here. The sad part is that even though she's doing this for Ezra, he would never want her to do this. Of course he wants to come back, but in the same way that he was willing to sacrifice himself to stop Thrawn, he would also be willing to never return home if that means preventing another war. So I am very curious to how he will react when he finds out about what Sabine did here. I also like how Balin tells Shin not to harm Sabine when she starts force stroking her. At least he is a man of his word. I should also point out that at this point, it seems like Shin is more towards the dark side than he is. He seems to avoid fighting until absolutely necessary, while Shin seems to enjoy it. Then we have the amazing hyperspace jump. Jason says he has a bad feeling, which I think points to his force intuition. Next, the last scene. The one that broke the internet. Ahsoka in the world between worlds and Anakin showing up. The world between worlds was extremely well done in live action. It looked amazing. As soon as Anakin said, Yes, I started freaking out. I can't believe we finally get to see them together in live action. But I'm also aware that he might not be Anakin. He wasn't a force ghost, so if you pair this with the fact that they played the Vader theme right after, and that the sun's voice showed up in the first episode when Ahsoka was at the temple, it makes sense that this is the sun playing tricks on Ahsoka. Last time Ahsoka went into the world between worlds, Morai was there, which has ties to the daughter, and clearly the Mortis entities, which are the son, the daughter, and the father, play a role in opening the world between worlds because they are the ones in the painting that Sabine and Ezra used to open it. We are the ones who and the daughter's life is tied to Ahsoka, so it makes sense that Ahsoka can be pulled into there. But either way, I think a lot of crazy things will happen next episode, including in Mustafar. Also, we must at some point get a scene between Ahsoka and Anakin's Force Ghost, and I can't wait for it. If you liked this video, leave your like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you can watch my future videos. Thanks for watching and have a great day.